All right, so we're going to be doing steps 9 and 10, which is going to be the closing of the books and the post-closing trial balance. Now, as you can see here, we're going to go ahead and do close out our temporary account. So what does it mean to close out our temporary account? Well, if we have some kind of account balance, we want to zero them out. So when we do start our new accounting period, we have a clean slate, meaning we're starting all over in the account so we can measure profitability and measure our revenues and expenses, right? Because every month you're going to, oh, well, every accounting period, you're going to um, occur different revenues and different expenses, right? So as we mentioned before, right, you can't predict your revenues. Yes, you may have a regular customer that comes in every day and orders the same thing over and over and over, but you can't expect them to do that all the time because one day that customer can come in and surprise you and order something else. They're, maybe they're thinking, no, don't give me the regular, let's try something new. So there you go, that's another example. Other two things that you can also experience is that you're going to have constantly brand new customers that come in and walk into your store, but you're also going to lose your old customers too because that's just how it is, right? Sometimes um, your old customers, your loyal customers, they no longer like your product anymore or whatever it is that gives them a reason. So they end up um, not going to your store anymore. So again, you won't be able to predict your revenues same thing with the expenses right you may have your fixed expenses like rent right uh but things like utilities utilities is based on how much um you use your utilities right so especially water and electricity maybe this month you use a lot more electricity because it was so hot so you had to crank up the ac a little higher right and you had to leave it on all day or else the shop would get super hot so again there are many, many, many reasons and many factors that could cause our revenues and expenses to not be the same all the time, okay? So again, when we have that kind of uh, uh, notion, right, that is a perfect way that we are able to measure profitability and measure if we are doing well in business. Are we generating the income enough to cover our expenses, right? Right? So in this case, it's exactly what we're going to do. This is how we close out our books. So you will be needing your journal. And we're going to be zeroing out all of our revenues and our expenses, okay? And we're going to um, zero them out into income summary, okay? So income summary is going to be our way to um, collect our money right whether we had a profit or a loss right it's our it's just a temporary account it's not a temporary account but what i meant is it's a it's a placeholder account that when we uh obtain the revenue and obtain all the expenses if we had a net profit or net loss that's where we make our executive decision are we going to reinvest it into the company or are you going to take that profit and pocket that profit? Okay, so that's the option that you have there. Okay, now again, when we're trying to take a look at that kind of ordeal, right, where that's our decision, right? So an income summary is the same thing as retained earnings for corporations, right? Retained earnings is a mean for whether you're going to decide to either reinvest into your company or split it off as dividends, okay? So retained earnings is the same thing as an income summary, okay? So it's just a placeholder account until we make an executive decision whether what we're going to do with the amount of profit. So in this case, um, let's take a look at that um, income summary account. So we know it's an equity account, okay? So we know it's an equity account. Right, it's here it is. Okay, now our goal is we need to zero out all of my revenues and all of my expenses because that is going to tell me, right? That's how I'm going to be starting over every accounting period. Is I'm going to close out my accounts. Closing out the accounts just simply means you're going to zero them out so they don't have any account balances. 
Now, if you remember, how do you close out or how do you zero out your accounts? Well, in this case, my revenues typically have a normal credit balance. So if I currently have a credit balance of XYZ, how do I make it become zero? Well, simple. You're going to you're going to debit the account for the exact amount of credits you have in that account and that's how you make the balance become zero. So in this case, what am I doing? I'm going to instead of credit my accounts, I'm going to debit my income accounts or my revenue accounts, right? Because I'm intentionally trying to zero out every single account. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to credit all of my sales into the income summary, okay? So I'm zeroing out all of my revenues into income summary. And then when I'm done with that, then I go move go ahead and move on to my, uh, my um, expenses. And because my expenses are normally debited, that means I'm going to credit all of my expenses and debit my income summary, okay? So that's what we're going to do. So in this case, I'm what I'm going to do is to make this a little easier, I'm going to have my journal and my ledger open side by side, just like how I normally do it. But what I mean by side by side is I'm going to go through each and every account, journalize it, and immediately post it right away. So then that way I can save myself time from having to go back again and go through every single account and start you know, zeroing them out one out of uh, um, every single one of them, right? I'm going to do it as I go, all right? So I'm going to do steps three and four at the same time where I'm journalizing and then posting to my ledger immediately after each and every single account that I'm closing out, right? Because that will save you a bunch of time. So the first thing I mentioned was that we're going to start closing out our revenues first. So for this example, right, I'm going to start closing out every single one account oops sorry about that guys so let's start here my very first thing i have here under revenues is going to be my sales for regular coffee and the great thing about this is that when we're taking a look here you have all the information that you need to zero it out right you got the account number you got the account name you got the account balance and you'll be able to do everything simultaneously so in this case uh, we're making the adjustment on June 30th. Today, it, uh, I mean, not today. The account here is we have a credit balance, so we need to debit my revenue. So starting with the first one, we got sales for regular coffee. Okay. Sales regular coffee. Okay. Account number 450. Okay. So how much am I going to debit this amount by? Well, in this case, like I mentioned, right, I need to zero them out. That's the our terminology for closing our accounts out. So in this case, um, I currently have uh, $13.94.96 available. So that's exactly how much I'm going to debit. $13.94.96. Okay. Okay, let me see if I actually have enough space. Oh, I have plenty of space. Okay, so 13, 13, 94, 96. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. I'm going to go ahead and post it directly in here. And I'm going to call this closing. Okay, and we're on general journal. Page 25 here. And I'm going to debit for $13.94.96. So therefore, my account balance should now be zero. Okay? So I'm going to do one account at a time. So the next one is going to be my sales for Supreme Coffee. Okay? Account number for zero one hundred, And I'm going to debit this by $1,436.40. dollars Okay. And therefore, I'm going to go ahead and 
post it with a closing. General Journal 25 for the 143640. And that should give you zero. Okay. So again, I'm going to go through every single one. So I got the ceramic coffee mugs. So you're going to close out every single account so you don't have any count, um, any count left. 4150. And my account balance right now is 1763.91. Oops, too much. 1763.91. Seventeen sixty three ninety one. Next one I have here is going to be my sales for the medium coffee. <laughs> Excuse me, medium regular coffee. Forty-three hundred for account balance of five two two one seventy-six. Close twenty-five for. Five two two one seventy six. Next account is my large regular coffee. Forty three fifty. For a total of six five zero three twenty Sixty-five hundred three twenty-five. Two. Okay. Next, I have is my medium supreme coffees. Forty-four. Fifty for total of six six five five seven seven. Then uh, let me see what else I have. The large supreme coffee. Forty five hundred. At seventy five twenty four. Forty four okay. 
Okay. Next I have here is a sales returns and allowances. So what I'm gonna do is see as you could see here, right? I have to credit this balance because sales returns and allowances is a contract account. It reduces your sales. So in this case, I have to um, zero it out by debt by crediting this account. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna skip this one for now so then I can get all of my um, debits in line and then go ahead and process my credits uh, later, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna skip sales returns and allowances. I'm gonna skip sales discount because that also reduces it as well. I have delivery income and then interest income, which is nothing. So let me go ahead and record that um, delivery income first. Account number 48,000 for a grand total of $300. There you go, zero. So then I'm gonna return and I gotta do the sales returns and allowances and the discount. And then I am done with my revenues. Okay, so I got a sales returns and allowances. Which is account number 45,000. And I'm going to credit it for the $19.96. Zero. Okay. And then I have a sales discount. Okay, account number 46,000 for a credit of 1979 cents. Nineteen hundred and seventy nine cents to zero. Okay. And then now, last but not least, I need to figure out how much I'm actually going to be either debiting or in this case, I'm going to credit my income summary. How much am I actually going to um, credit my income summary? Well, in this case, I got to do some math here. I got to figure out what my total um Debit balances are versus my total credit balances. So 39999. So what you can do is you can go ahead and formulate the calculation either on the side. In this case, I'm just I wanted to I want to actually see it here. So equal sum. So I'm gonna tally up all of my debit accounts. So I got Three thousand thirty thirty thousand eight hundred and forty nine dollars versus uh one thousand twenty seventy five. So if I go ahead and type in here thirty eight hundred forty nine minus nineteen twenty seventy five. There you go. 
I should be debiting a grand total of two thousand eight hundred and eighty set to twenty eight thousand eight hundred and seventy nine dollars and forty seven cents. Okay. That is how much I need to credit my account. Okay, so then I'm going to go ahead and put right here that I'm going to, this is revenues, close. Close out all revenues. Credit for two 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 eight eight seven nine and seventy four cents. So again, since my income summary is an equity account, it should normally have a credit balance of this. In this case, it has a credit balance of twenty eight eight seven nine seventy four. And I can go ahead and make my note in my description now that we are closing out all revenues to income summary. Okay. So that's the very first section there was all of my revenues. Now in this case, I'm going to tell you now. I'm not going to break up my expenses from cost of goods sold to revenue. So in this case, I'm going to tell you right now, this right here is definitely not enough space to put in all of my revenue. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a line because, again, I don't want to split my transactions. Even if though I could do an income summary for all my cost of goods sold accounts and then do another income summary for all of my um, equity accounts, I don't think that's necessary. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cross out this section here, okay, and put a bar there. So shape, line, uh, from here all the way to the bottom corner here because that is definitely a lot of extra, extra space that can be definitely used for um, any fraudulent charges. So there you go. So like I mentioned, like we did the journal at the same time as my general ledger because we need the general ledger to get the account balance. Once we get the account balance, then we need to determine how much we're going to actually journalize. And then right here, we could just go ahead and write it off right away. Okay. So there you go. That was my first section here for all my revenues. Now I drew my line and now I can go ahead and complete my expenses starting with the cost of goods sold now if you remember the rule here is we are going to debit my income summary okay for uh everything right and we're going to close out every single expense into my income summary. So in this case, right, we're gonna go through one at a time, just exactly like my revenues. This time I'm gonna be crediting all of my um, expense accounts. So starting with the cost of goods sold for the regular coffee, okay? That's my first credit account expense account. COGS, regular coffee, Right, account number 50050. And I'm going to credit this for a grand total of 1406, 1406, oops, 1406, Okay. And just exactly like how I did my um, revenues, I'm going to go ahead and Take it, out, take it out immediately. So in this case, we're going to close out this account by crediting 
140603 and that should zero out my account. Okay. We move to next the page, right? Oh yes, yes, yes because this is definitely not enough space for all my expenses, right? I'm not going to break it up between um, my cost of goods sold and my operating, right? I'm going to just do it all in once. Okay? You can break it up. Yes, it will be much more nice and concise. But if you break it up that way, I mean, it doesn't matter what you do since I'm trying to save some journal space here. In this case, yes, I just wasted journal space. But at the end of the day, um, that's just, you know, a decision that I want to make. I want to just do all my expenses all at once versus do a separate one for cost of goods sold and then do a separate one for all my operating expenses. So in this case, that's just what I'm doing. I'm just skipping this section here, just listing everything out so that I can just sum up all of my expenses instead of making two separate ones for it. Okay. So now that I closed out my uh, cost of goods sold for regular coffee, I need to close out my cost of goods sold for supreme coffee. Account number 5100 for the grand total amount of fourteen eighty six sixty one. Oh, we're on 26. For 14, 86, 61. And that should give you your account balance to zero. Okay. Next one I have here is my cost of goods sold. Ceramic coffee mugs. Okay, account number 6150. Four grand total amount of eleven eighty two forty three. Eleven eighty two forty three. Is zero eleven eighty two forty three. Okay. Next section here is going to be the cost of materials. Okay, so cost of materials for my medium coffee cups. Account number five one two zero zero, and I'm gonna credit that for two hundred and eighty seven dollars and ten cents. Two eight seven ten. Okay. Next one is going to be the cost of materials for the large coffee cups. Count number fifty one two fifty. For a grand total amount of three five one six eight. Okay, 
zero. Next is going to be the cost of materials for the sugar. Or 51300 for a grand total of $43.20. Zero that one out. Last but not least, I got the cost of materials for the creamer. I count number And that is it for my cost of goods sold. Okay. So yes, that could have fit um, on page 25. But like I said, I just want to sum up all of my expenses all in one go. Okay. So now, last section is going to be zeroing out every single operating expense account. So starting with the first one here, advertising expense. Out number sixty thousand for a grand total of one eighty five. Okay. Next is bank fees. Sixty one hundred for a total of one hundred dollars. Zero. Okay. Next is business expenses. Account number sixty two hundred for the grand total of twelve eighty two seventy eight. Twelve eight two seven eight. And that's exactly what I'm gonna put here. Twelve eight two seventy eight. And that should give you zero. Next account I have here is freight expense, which is already zeroed out from due to my periodic inventory conversion. So nothing there. Next I have here is my insurance expense. For $6,400. With a total amount of three thousand or three hundred ninety-five dollars and eighty-three cents. Three ninety-five eighty-three. Let me close this account. Okay. Next is interest expense.
Round number 65, oops, 450. For a um, total of 105.40. Next I have here is labor expense. Nothing really in there, but I do have subcontractor and temporary labor expense. Okay. Okay, subcontractor expense was for eighteen ninety. Okay. I also have temporary labor expense. Sixty five twenty. Okay, for a total of three hundred and sixty dollars. So I can close that out. Okay, zero that. Then I have license and permit expense and loss and disposal of assets. Oops. License and permit expense first. Account number 6600. Three hundred and seventy five dollars. And then you have loss on disposal of assets. Account number sixty seven hundred for two thousand dollars. Okay, that's not a good two thousand dollars. See what's next. I have office supplies expense. For sixty seven fifty for a total of seventy dollars. Okay. Then we have 
uh, payroll expenses. So we're going to start off one at a time with the salaries and wages expense. Ten for a total of three thousand five hundred and fifty dollars. Next one is commissions expense. Sixty-eight twenty for $1,647.75. Sixteen forty seven seventy five. Next is payroll tax expense. Okay, the next one we have is purchase expense. Once again, has been already zeroed out through the periodic conversion. So no purchase expense, no purchase returns and allowances, and no purchase discount. Okay. Next we have is rent expense. Account number sixty two thousand for fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Then we have travel expenses. For $63,000, which was for Utilities expense, nothing there. Then we have bad debt expense. Let's 
65,000 for a total of $76.70. Or sorry, We have depreciation expense. Sixty-six thousand. And this one's for six hundred and fifty-five dollars and eight cents. Last account for the day is going to be amortization. Okay, which is sixty six five hundred for a total of eleven dollars and sixty seven cents. And since that's all of your expenses, you can now go ahead and also write here, close out all expenses to income summary. Okay. So in this case, this is the easiest one. All you got to do is equal sum this formula and you will get your total expenses that you need to debit your income summary by. So equal sum. I'm going to go ahead and just do this for you guys so you guys can get the answer pretty quickly. You should have a total of $2,006.72 worth of expenses. So now I'm going to go to my income summary. And I'm going to go ahead and Plug this in. Close out all expenses. We debited the account for two thousand or twenty thousand, excuse me, twenty thousand six dollars and seventy two cents. So again, because this is the normal balance, it is going to be the credit. So you should have a credit balance of 887302. Okay, and where have we seen this number before? I don't think I've recognized that number, but well, let's go ahead and double check. It should be matching your income statement did you get eight eight seven three oh two yes you did okay another thing the two you could do is you could compare your income summary right since we close out all of our sales right that gave us a grand total of 28 Seven, eight, 
I'm sorry, 28, 5, 7, 9, 47. But we also have to include that $300 um, income, which should have been 28, 8, 7, 4, 7. All right, we got that. Same thing with our expects is expenses, right? My total operating expenses was 14, 8, 90, 41. But don't forget the total of my cost of materials and cost of goods sold. That should give you your grand total of that $2,006.72. And now, this is where I get a credit balance in my income summary. So, next step is I have to now place that into my statement of equity because I decided to reinvest my profits back into my equity. So, on this page, what do I have to do? I need to close out my income summary to my equity account. Right now, I currently have um, a credit balance in my income summary. So, what should I do to zero it out? I need to debit my account, right? I need to debit my income summary account. For a total of 887302. And my equal opposite is going to be crediting my owner's equity. Because what happens when I credit my owner's equity? What did I do to my owner's equity? We are increasing the owner's equity. We are increasing the owner's equity. So that is what we're supposed to do, right? The, 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 ba the normal balance of an income summary is to have a credit balance. So you do increase your equity at the end of the day. Okay? Okay, so that's why, that's why um, income summary is not considered... A contra account because it doesn't flow in the opposite direction it flows the same direction as equity so if if you're gonna if you're gonna have a credit balance in your income summary you're also going to have a credit balance in your equity if you choose to reinvest the money back into it so in this case I'm going to go ahead and put in here reinvest a profit into equity Okay, by debiting my income summary. Okay, but I gotta put close here. And I'm gonna debit this for the eight eight seven three oh two. Okay, and of course, if you've already plugged in your formula here, you should get zero. And what's going to happen is you are going to plug in, and I'm going to write reinvest net profit or income, whatever you want to call it. Which is going to credit your account for 887302. Okay. So now... Your account balance is 3887302. But hold up. That's not true. My equity does not reflect that. Well, there's one more step we forgot to do. What is that? We also have to close out anything that has to do with equity accounts into equity. Because in this case, we end up taking that $3,000 out of my equity a long time ago. So this is where we have to also close out my owner's withdrawal to my equity account, right? So in this case, how do I do that? Well, I currently have a debit balance in my owner's withdrawal, so I need to credit my owner's withdrawal and then debit my equity. And what does it mean to debit your equity? You're going to decrease your equity. So in this case... That's the last thing. And guess what? I fit the page perfectly. So I'm going to 
debit my owner's withdraw okay and i'm going to credit my oh wait no no sorry i'm supposed to debit my owner's equity and credit my owner's withdrawal for that $3,000, okay? And of course, you're gonna also make a note here that you're going to close out with draws out to equity. Okay, oops, didn't end my parenthesis there. There you go. So that's the last thing I have to do is close out my withdrawals. And then I'm going to close it out to my equity account. Now, my equity is going to equal $35,873.02. And where does this match? My statement of owner's equity at $35,873.02. Okay. So now that I finished closing out my books... I need to go ahead and put that note here in my journal, okay? Making sure that nobody puts anything in here because we are now done with step nine. Close the books. Okay. So now that I am completely done with step nine, all I have to do is the very last step, which is to complete the post-closing trial balance. And this is the easiest one. Because when I do this, so let's go ahead and do the post-closing trial balance. What I normally do is I am going to take my post-closing trial balance and I'm going to delete it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a copy of my balance sheet. Okay. And I want it here, okay? So there you go. Here's my uh, balance sheet copy. Rename it and call it post-closing trial balance. Okay, so I'm going to make adjustments here. So this is supposed to say post-closing trial balance, okay? Ending, of course, as of June. Oh, this was to say 30th. Okay. And simple, right? We just said we just call this my debit <laughs> column. And we call this my credit column. So I was able to um, take a form and transfer and transmit it into a 
post-closing trial balance. All I had to do was just make some extra fixtures, such as we don't need, uh, we don't need total assets here. So I can just simply delete this row. All right. I got my liabilities. Don't need a total liabilities row. All right. Don't need an owner's equity row either. Or this, this one's a blank one. We need our owner's equity. And then, of course, we can get rid of my total liabilities and equity account uh, row here. And I just redo the formula. Calling this equals sum. And I'm going to highlight all of my debits here. And then I'm going to go ahead and pull the formula across to my credits here and redo my formula. Debits minus credits equals zero. And there you go. My post-closing trial balance is now done. And my owner's equity does in, flat, uh, does in fact equal to $35,873.02 because I just transferred it from my books. I closed out all my accounts and closed them out to my equity and I now have a new equity and now I can start my accounting cycle all over again. All right. Any questions in regards to anything and everything that we learned here today through Coffee Cafe?